Hey everyone, how are you all doing today? And welcome back to Fanatic Sports. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more NFL content in your life. Now, let's move on to today's video. Defensive Player of the Year is obviously the award given to the best defensive player that season. Players like Stephon Gilmore, Aaron Donald, Khalil Mack, and JJ Watt all have recently won the award. Winning Defensive Player of the Year is very important for a defensive player because it is near impossible for them to win MVP, with how the league values offensive players so much more. We have seen defensive players before single-handedly carry a pass rush or secondary, for example in the recent past with Stephon Gilmore or Aaron Donald. And I think we could see that again this year. Today, I am going to talk about my top 5 candidates for Defensive Player of the Year. Let's get right into it. At number 5, we have an obvious choice in Bobby Wagner. Wagner has been a first-team All-Pro five times for, since 2014 for obvious reasons. Being the best linebacker in the 2010s, unless you say Luke Keekley or Patrick Willis, it is clear that he deserves the All-Pro selections. Last season, he racked up one interception, 159 tackles, which led the league, one forced fumble and fumble recovery, three sacks, and seven tackles for loss. Wagner has consistently been a dominant force in the middle of the field for Seattle, and it's hard to argue him not being literally anywhere in this list, whether it's 5-1. to one. He could win it if he does better than last year, which is difficult. Now, that's kind of obvious, but just have how good of a year he had last year, and he still wasn't even in the voting, I feel like he just has to go above and beyond last year to even come close to winning it. The reason he is at 5 is because I think pass rushers have an advantage when it comes to winning this award, as 7 out of the last 10 defensive player of the years have been pass rushers. Troy Palomalu, Keekly, and Stefan Gilmore are the other 3. Wagner has an unbelievable ability to stop someone in their place as he barely misses any tackles and obviously racks up a lot of them. Wagner next season will again put up amazing numbers, as his defensive line did not get much better, so it will be easier for him to get the tackles he is getting used to. Now I'm not saying he's stat pads, but that is reason as to why some linebackers get crazy amount of tackles, or safeties. Just because the front seven as a whole could be weak, so they have to do so, and people get to their level. However, the front seven is not horrible for the Seahawks, just not as great as it once was. They have made no real upgrades in those positions, especially since they haven't re-signed Clowney yet. Wagner as a whole is the best linebacker in the NFL nowadays, and I don't see why anyone could fight him for that spot until he retires. A surefire Hall of Famer when he leaves the NFL, we should expect a great year from Bobby Wagner this season. One of the best man coverage corners of this generation comes in at number 4, being Stephon Gilmore. The winner of the award last season, Gilmore proved to everyone that he's the best corner in the league today. It is very hard for a corner, or just a defensive back in general, to win the award because they may not put up the flashy stats that you can see a linebacker or pass rusher do. But last year, Gilmore's numbers were insane. He had 6 interceptions, 2 of them were pick 6s, 20 pass deflections which led the league, no touchdowns allowed the whole season, a 44.1 pass rating allowed, and a 50.5 completion percentage when targeted. When a corner does things of that nature, he clearly deserves the award as he got 21 of the 50 votes. No QB threw his way all season until, you know, week 17 when Devontae Parker just, you know, had to exist. He had 8 catches for 137 yards. But besides that, no wide receiver had a real great game against him, or a QB for that matter. Unlike some defensive player of the years, he did not carry the team's defense because the Patriots defense as a whole, which is great. But he was definitely a huge part in leading the Patriots to a 12-4 record with one of their best defenses in franchise history. However, next season I feel as if he and the rest of the defense will be on the field too much due to the lack of an actual offense the Patriots have. They will have a not as good time of possession next year. So, Stefan playing that much, I don't think he'll be able to maintain the production he had last season. So he's at 4, and I don't have him repeating next season. For number 3, I have Khalil Mack. He had a down year to his standards last season, with just 8.5 sacks, 47 tackles, 8 of them for loss, 14 QB hits, and 5 forced fumbles. He is a one-time defensive player of the year, and it's first player to be named first-team All-Pro at defensive end and outside linebacker. Mack's numbers last season for sure are not bad, but they are not what we used to seeing when Khalil Mack goes on the field. He is known as one of the best pass rushers of the 2010s after being drafted in 2014 and dominating from 2015 on. As an outside pass rusher, Mack is given a tough time as teams never really let him alone on the edge due to how easily he can get to the quarterback when given the opportunity. So I guess you can say that's why his number dropped. Another reason I believe they dropped is because the Bears D as a whole was not as good. So that hurt Mack because he was the only reliable and healthy pass rush threat on the team. I cannot put Mack higher on this list because the Bears defense continually gets worse and I cannot see him single-handedly carrying the pass rush like he did with the Raiders. 
with age also being a minor factor. It is a very minor factor though. However, I still think he has a fair shot at this award as he can get by any tackle in the league with ease due to his plethora of pass rush moves he uses on everybody, as well as just his pure brute strength. He pushes linemen back nearly every play and gets a lot of strip sacks due to that. I can see him winning Defensive Player of the Year next year, but I think that just due to the increased play from the entire defense as a whole, it'll be hard for Mack to be as dominant knowing that the team won't create as much pressure, which makes it easier for Mack to get to the quarterback. Next, we have potentially the best defensive player in the league being Aaron Donald. Donald saw his stats decrease last season as he had 12.5 sacks, 20 tackles for loss, which led the league, 24 QB hits, 48 tackles, and 2 forced fumbles. Yes, that is actually a significant decrease from the season prior where he put up 20.5 sacks and 25 tackles for loss as well. There is no argument to me that he's the best defensive player in the NFL. I don't care what anyone says, it cannot be argued to me. But his stats decreased for the simple reason. He gets double and triple teamed every single play. Literally watch him play, you never see him in a one-on-one -on -one because teams are too afraid to do that because of just how good he is, how strong he is, and how many moves he has that can just fake any offensive lineman out and just get by them. The reason he's the best defensive player to me is because even getting double and triple teamed, he still puts up the numbers that defensive ends and defensive tackles would love to have and dream for. He already is a Hall of Famer at the age of 29 and is a two-time defensive player of the year and 2014 defensive rookie of the year. Donald really has no argument to be anywhere outside the top three, and although I know he's the best defensive player in the league, I think that his lack of insane sack numbers that he's used to having will keep him from winning the hardware when it is all said and done. And for the player that I think will win Defensive Player of the Year next year, I have TJ Watt. Coming in third last season with 10 total votes, I think that this season he will dominate teams just like he did last season and just like his older brother JJ has done his whole career. Last season, he had 14.5 sacks, 14 tackles for loss, 36 QB hits and 59 pressures with 55 tackles, 2 interceptions, 8 forced fumbles, and was a first team All-Pro. Which is purely dominant last season. It was one of the best pass rushers in the league with Shaq Bear, Aaron Donald, Chandler Jones. Put them in any order you want, just they all put up crazy numbers last season. Watt is a part of the up and coming Steel Curtain 2.0 with people like Devin Bush, Minka Fitzpatrick, Joe Hayden, and more in that defense. Watt carries his brother's traits of dominating every team's tackles every single game and route to an almost defensive player of the year season last year. He's one of the most talented pass rushers I have seen since I started watching football. And saying that hurts because I watched the Dolphins draft Charles Harris just a couple of picks before TJ Watt. Looking back on this bring tears to my eyes. Next season, I think TJ will average at least a sack a game, probably like 1.2, and have about 20 tackles for loss with more pressures. Now that means about 20 sacks, 18 to 20 is what I can see with J uh, TJ next season. My gut feeling is just telling me that he will just do things that we have not seen him do before and win this award in 2020. If I am wrong, it'll probably be Aaron Donald, but hey, my opinion is my opinion. But hey, I'm not always right, if I ever even am. I would bet some money that TJ will win this award next season, not as much as I would bet for Mahomes to win MVP, but still a decent amount. To conclude today's video, I have TJ Watt winning Defensive Player of the Year. With that being said, that is all from me, guys. Thank you for tuning into Fanatic Sports. Hope you all liked the video. If you did, please hit the subscribe and like button. It takes two seconds. Thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful day.